Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of Podiatry Marketing. With me today is my co-host, Big Jim, all the way over in Canada. I'm all the way here in Australia, and across the airwaves, we are sharing this podcast. So, Jim, how are you doing today? Uh, feeling fantastic, Tyson. I'm excited to uh, have this opportunity to chat with you, hear about how hot it is and how exciting things are in Australia. Well, I guess I'm getting into springtime now, so it's not so bad here, but yeah, you know, I was here. I was... Love hearing about the 90 degree, 90 degree days Fahrenheit with you at the beach. It makes me a little bit, yeah, I definitely need to get down to a beach one of these days. Yeah, now it's May, so it's, we only have two, two types of weather in Cairns, hot and hotter. So during summer, it's hotter. But during, no, as we head into winter now, May heading into June, the temperature really starts to drop off. So it's probably around 80 uh, during the day Fahrenheit for uh, Fahrenheit people. And, but it's just your gorgeous days, sun shining. You, you pray for a bit of rain just to try and green things up a little bit. But yeah, it's just the best time. If anyone's ever visiting the tropics in North Queensland, probably from, oh, I would say April through to September is the best time of the year. I'll keep if that in mind. From <laughs> November to March. <laughs> what were you thinking? No, I'm thinking that I'll have to come visit one of these times and get away from Canada in the winter and springtime. So. It'll kill you. If you came up here during your winter, it'll just, it'll kill you. <laughs> Come during your summer. So what are we talking about today, Jim? What are we on about? Yeah. So we're going to talk today about how to handle a negative review. I think Ooh. it's one of those topics that it's not fun. I, I no. think every clinic has them. Having a way to understand what, what is that? How do you deal with it when that kind of that bomb goes off? Or you know, I think patient podiatrists are really great about handling wounds and all kinds of health related problems. I know that even when I was in you know, practice, you would occasionally get a, a negative review and it felt like almost like a personal attack, but it's not the end of the world really. And there's some steps that people can utilize to really take account of what happened and make sure that there's a, a good result at, at the very end of what feels like a really negative experience or a, a bad review. So what should someone do? So right from the start, like I know when I had my podiatry clinic, the occasional not positive review would come through on something. And it did. It, all of a sudden, it was just oof, like someone's driven a knife right in your chest. <laughs> so you, be, you go from being thick-skinned to thin-skinned really fast when there's a, a, a negative review. I had one. I had a negative review on my book once. Oh, really? Person I think can't that, read. I'll, you know, oh, hang on. I'll, I'll give him a shout-out to Emil. That's all he put on the E-M-I-L. I just call him Emil the Tosser. One star review. Go. Yeah. But that's the thing is you remember this guy's name, right? And how many of the positive ones do you remember? So we sometimes, as human I mean, beings, yeah, true. we sometimes focus on the negative a little bit. But I think the first step really is, number one, take a deep breath, right? Like, this is not the end of the world. It's not fun. But number one, you need to see whether or not this is actual, an actual patient in your practice or not. Yeah. Uh, fake reviews are pretty unlikely to have happen, but it can happen. So first of all, just you know, check and see what they put their name is on Google reviews or wherever it was at. And cross-reference that to make sure it's actual patient in your practice. If it is someone that is in your practice, you definitely, it's not necessarily the negative view that's going to cause the biggest issue. Mm. It's the way you respond to it. So mm, true. it's normal to feel defensive or emotional when we receive these types of reviews. But like I said, take a deep breath, realize that this is not the end of the world. Check and see if it's a patient of yours. If it is, th that kind of fight that urge to give that emotional knee-jerk reaction to write something that's either, number one, really defensive and comes off as confrontational online, or number two, you take the bait and reveal, at least in the U.S., we have HIPAA compliance laws, right? So if someone says, Dr. McDonald botched my surgery or Dr. Anderson did this thing to me, and then you share some information about their procedure or how they were non-compliant or something like in, the review, in that response to the review, that's a, a definite no. So you got to avoid being at that emotional level and you got to cool off a little bit before you come up with a plan about how to address it. Yeah, I think it's really important because sometimes you can just have a knee-jerk reaction. And like I said, I had them in the podiatry clinic, had it with the book. I probably The podcast has probably been some people that may not give you a five-star review. And initially, depending on what they wrote, sometimes it can just get under your skin. But when you just stop take a deep breath and you think about it, okay, where is this actually coming from? And like you said, and then you've got to handle it responsibly. 
don't handle it like sometimes because I, I think sometimes you've got to think what frame of mind were they in when they wrote review because if they were having a bad day and someone's run over their dog and their wife has left them and their car got stolen the next thing they come and see you as a podiatrist and they were already in a bad mental state and anything could probably set them off no, for sure. I think, like you said, it's, you don't know what's go going on in that person's life. They were with you maybe for half an hour, 45 minutes in your clinic. It's tough to decide, figure out exactly where they're coming from. But I think it is an opportunity to, to receive some feedback. If you're getting more than a couple of these every so often, it is a sign that maybe there is something in your operations or something within your clinics. When you dupe that out there, it is important to know that that is a possibility. And I'm not saying that it's okay to feel a little upset about it for a period of time, right? We're humans. That's normal. Like it is something where we train for this. We try to provide the best care we can, but at the same time, it feels like being attacked in a way. And so it is one of those things where you'd have to just cool off a little bit. And then what is the next step after that to make sure that you're responding in a way that's you know, thoughtful and honest, but at the same time is respectful of, because it's not really, you may not never convince that patient that you are in the right or that whatever the situation is, but. What's going to happen is someone's going to Google your name. They're going to find these Google reviews or these other reviews, and they're going to see how you respond to this patient. And that's, we'll get into some of these next steps about the proper way to respond, but know that you're writing that response, hopefully a little bit for that patient, but it's also for those other people searching for foot and ankle care services in your local area. Yeah. And the one thing you should probably not do is not respond. No, that's a hundred percent. You have to respond to those things. It's, it's just hanging out there in the air. And people think you don't care, right? And a non-response is almost, it's probably not as bad as a bad response, but yeah, like you said, if you don't respond, it's just a, a clear sign that you're kind of hoping it goes away, ignoring the problem. Yeah, you have to respond to these in a very specific manner to make sure that those people that search and find you see that you are someone that does care about what this feedback, whether it's true you know, or false or whatever, it has to be addressed. And one thing that sometimes you get asked by client, some of the clients I work with is, okay, like I said, I want this negative view gone. <laughs> like either, yeah. like it's a, it's like a, a fault that it's a, they think it's a false one or they just don't want it to be there anymore. No, that's not possible. Like it's just, unless it's like extremely like off the reservation, crazy, like Google is not going to delete a review there at all. So it's really important to know that. And also know that sometimes different types of review software that Maybe people will utilize, you're working with a marketing provider that utilizes something that'll only let people that rate five stars leave a Google review. That's not a great thing either because Google, it's actually like you, Google doesn't allow that. And if someone's really upset, they're going to get around your little like form that you sent them or yeah. something and get to Google or to whatever review site. So just know that as well, that the softwares that try to get rid of the one stars or two stars generally don't work. Yeah. And like you said, asking Google to remove it usually doesn't work. And we had a patient once who wrote a negative review, but you could tell that, and they weren't actually, they weren't a patient. They were going to be a patient, but didn't become a patient, wrote a negative review, but then so did three members of their family. Uh, yeah. All within an hour of each other, have all written this negative review. So we just politely wrote to them and just said, you know, will you please remove the reviews? It's not accurate. Otherwise you will hear from our lawyer and I like money. And I will take as much of it from you as I can get. And within 24 hours, they're all gone. They took them all down. So sometimes it is just reaching out to the patient and or reaching out to that person if you have their details, especially if it's not true. That is one option. And I think that gets into our next point. The next step in the process is really trying to figure out a way to settle this offline. Yeah. If you just kind of go back and forth online within a reply oh, yeah. to review and then they reply to your reply, it just becomes like what, what internet parlance we call uh, a flame war. Nobody's going to win from that. Um, and have you seen them? I've seen them in podiatry. I've seen them outside of podiatry and other businesses where it has now become an argument. And you can see it just escalating to the point of it's going to end in a knife fight. It's just not looking good. And you're thinking, which one of you is going to just stop this? They want to get the last word in. They just need to get the last word in. And the business owner, I don't think, realizes the world is reading that. And they would have been better just to have gone, thank you for your comments. And said no, for, 
No, for sure. You have to be the adult in the room there, right? You have to disassociate yourself from the emotion or trying to figure out like who is right in that moment. So definitely something that you have to be aware of. And like maybe you, this person wrote their review and you've already tried to reach out to them. You've already tried. So I know that that will sometimes happen. Sometimes that ability to try to settle it offline feels like that bridge is that that ship has already sailed. But at the same time, if there is an opening there, having uh, a one-on-one -on -one conversation, either the doctor uh, and the patient or the practice manager and the patient to try to understand the situation better. Because if you're, when you're leaving reviews, you want to make sure that you're not just writing that for the for future patients. Definitely needs, yeah. needs to be, it needs to be genuine and authentic, right? I'm not saying write something fake where it's like, oh yeah, like we, we try to settle this in a way that was, that'll read and it, it'll be kind of a snarky thing and you don't want to do that. But if you can really try to genuinely settle it offline, that's really the next best step. Have you ever left a one-star review? I think we had a plumber one time that just like did a, like everything worked worse after they left or yeah. I think they missed two, <laughs> they missed two appointments and then everything, we had some water issues after they left. And, and I don't think, I think I maybe left a, a like a two or three star, but like explain the situation. Cause I don't think it really, you, you see those like one star, no comments like that. That's yeah. pretty much the worst. I guess the only thing worse than that is like one, one star and a lie, but just even when I wrote that comment, I, having knowing that I work with podiatrists, I wanted to explain just the situation and why I was giving like a two or three star. I don't think I gave one star though. Have, have you given one star? Yeah, I have. I can't remember what it was for. I think it was, one was a restaurant because I just thought, I, I don't want you to kill anybody else. And because <laughs> I wanted to save people from eating there. And the other one, oh yeah, one was, one was a business, I mentioned the name here, but one was like a noodle business. And it was just, it was awful. It was an awful experience. And I think my daughter is still scarred from it. Not from me, from them. <laughs> and one was a, a accommodation place that we stayed at. That was just from start to finish was just outright horrible. And even when I gave them the one star, I then gave a list of things I reckon they should do to actually improve things. So I was trying to actually be, the, the one part of it, the location was awesome. There you go. <laughs> but it is, I reckon when I've read one star review, especially like I'm, whether it's a restaurant or say podiatry and I see a one or a two or even a three star review and the person hasn't commented, I always go, oh, do you not care about your business? Do you not look at these things? To me, that's an indication you're out of touch with what's actually happening today. Yeah. I think you definitely have to leave a review, leave a response to those reviews. Otherwise it, yeah, it just, it speaks volumes with, with nothing being there. So what's, what after that, after the, what's the next step? What should they do? Yeah. So let's say like you tried to ask them to either delete it. You shouldn't do that right away when you try to like settle it with them offline. But if they're unwilling to delete it or it doesn't seem like they're going to be reasonable with you, the next step is really to respond in a kind of a non-emotional HIPAA compliant manner. So that's saying something like you shouldn't apologize like that's or admit like guilt of any sort, but it's saying something like you know, at Tyson Franklin Podiatry Associates, we take the feedback from our patients very seriously. I will have my assistant, Rhonda, will reach out to you within the next 24 hours to see if there's a way that we can understand your situation and make a, make amends. That's probably not the best phrasing, but something similar to that nature, where it shows that you're taking it seriously. You're looking, you're basically trying to find a way to resolve the situation uh, with them. But that's, if it's, if it needs to get to that point, or you tried, but just giving a, a good review like that is a way to signal and show people that you are making a, a solid effort to find common ground with people that provided this level of feedback. And one thing I'll add to the end of that is that we do focus on these negative things, these negative views overwhelm us or get us emotional, but everybody has them. And if you, if you have a clinic that has zero, like one stars or even two stars in there, like 5.0, it's a bit dodgy point, looking, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if you have 5.0 here, I'm not here to throw shade on you and say that you're like, you're running a, a shady operation somewhere between. 4.7 and 4.9 looks more genuine or more authentic and seems yeah. more realistic for people to shoot for. If you're under 4.5, maybe there's some work you need to do in your clinic. If that's if you have over 100 reviews and they're below 4.5, but it is one of those things where these positive ones are really going to drown out the occasional negative one. But if you can, if you're using different type of software, if you have patients that haven't provided a review that have had great experiences with you, there's ways of pushing that down. At least in Google reviews, they don't show the most recent review. 
they usually show the most relevant review that, that, that pops up there. As long as you're making that effort, like I said, responding in a HIPAA compliant, non-emotional way that shows that you are you know, trying to make an effort with this patient or the person leaving the review, most patients will understand that. And if you have a lot more positives than negatives, that's really what it's all about. So don't focus on this one. You definitely need to address it. You don't want to ignore it. But at the same time, it's not the end of the world if you get a negative review. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's, and I have read that where if you've got a thousand reviews and it's 5.0, people go, it's, I have a thousand reviews. You know, I haven't had one person that's even just been slightly, <laughs> yeah, unhappy with something. I know when we had, when I had my podiatry clinic, I think it was, we sit around 4.7, 4.8. Because there was always that one four star one or a one star one where someone had the shits about something. And, but my cl old clinic now, I think it's at, now that I don't own it, 3.5 could be problems. And when you read the reviews, a lot of the times the reviews are saying similar sort of things, but they're not being addressed either. Nobody is commenting on those reviews. So I think it's important to, to address every review, even if you don't agree with it. And sometimes too, I think even if someone gives you a one star, when you read through it, there was, I remember there's one particular one star review. And when you read through it, my comment was just, it was something along the lines of, yeah, your complaint. I, I, when I read through your complaint, I, I totally understand because it made no sense. I'm just saying, I didn't even know where to start. I just went, anyone who reads it is going to realize you are a nutter and just think, my God, thank God that person isn't a patient. So it's, yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Well, sometimes these the things can pop up just due to organizational issues, right? Sometimes they caught you at a bad time. I think yeah. one of my, one of my clients was in the process of their training, like a new front desk gal. And she just like that some, for some reason, there's like a kind of a series of events that happened that led to a really a negative situation where the person's point was either canceled or they, they were something happened in a negative way. So there are definitely ways that if this negative review can be resolved and the patient can be made to feel better. But like you said, sometimes there's people that just either aren't reasonable or just are having a bad day or need some way to let off some steam. And so unfortunately, sometimes this happens in your clinic reviews, but just know that you're probably going to have more, more good than bad. And if there is the grain of, if you get, let's say you get five bad reviews in a year and there's something like a similar kind of area that they're talking about or a specific topic, that's probably a sign that area needs to be tweaked a little bit or improved. And hopefully there's other ways to gather patient feedback, talking to your patient at the, the end of the, the appointment, making sure you're listening to, to them during the visit. I think sometimes if you're busy in practice and you're trying to see a ton of patients, that extra, is there anything else I can do for you? Do you have, are there any questions you have for me today? Like sometimes those types of questions at the end of an appointment from the doctor can actually diffuse a lot of negative reviews that mm. they just want to feel heard sometimes, even if the person is going to, it's not going to diffuse every negative review, but by just asking maybe one question at the end of a, a patient encounter, it will sometimes help uh, the potential to diffuse some of this stuff. Yeah. And like you said, in every negative review, there probably is an, some element of truth in there, even if it's in only in their mind, if they think it's true, then it's true. And you've then got to address and make sure you handle that the right way. Yep, we'd had some complaints and when we read through it, we just went, okay, I see where she, I see where they're coming from, but they don't understand this side of things. So a lot of times, yeah, we would just take it straight offline and try and communicate with them. And I would say of every negative review we got, and there wasn't a lot of them, say over 15 years I had the clinic where reviews were coming through, there may have been maybe five or six negative reviews. We were able to get five yeah, probably 90% of them removed where the patients would come back in. So they may have seen somebody else in my clinic, for example. They've commented what they've commented on. I've gone, oh, that's really interesting. I would reach out and say, hey, I found your review really interesting. Would, would you please come back in the clinic and see me? I want to run through this. And when they came and saw me and we ran through, I went, ah, okay, I see. I understand what you're talking about. They went, yeah, that's what I was trying to explain, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't listen. And that comes back to the communication part. They would go home, they would remove the review. So I think as the business owner, you have got to be take affirmative action on this as well. No, I couldn't agree more. Just in summary, don't get too emotional when, they, when you get that negative review. Don't clap back and try to leave. Fight fire with fire is not going to win the war in this one. <laughs> That's if why you, keyboards you don't have an F off button. 
<laughs> exactly. Because uh, if they did, it'd a lot of, some people would just go, oh, I can't believe you said that. Mm, F. Yeah, it'd be, a ba- it'd be a battle that no one won. So yeah. the, the second step is really to try to find a way to settle this offline that with both you know yourself and the patient or, or the reviewer kind of feeling they feel good about uh, whatever settlement, if you could do that offline. Number three, leave a, you have to leave, you have to respond to these. So if you're going to respond, make sure you do it in a calm and not emotional way mm. that really shows that you listen to the feedback and you're trying to find a way to resolve the situation with them. That's really the best way to address these. And like I said, it's really about communicating with patients, whether it be your staff or yourself, will really sometimes help diffuse these things. Like I said, it's not one negative reason, not the end of the world. So if you do get these, they can be frustrating and it, that's, that's just the way it goes, but try to focus on the positive all those 4.7 or 4.8, and you're getting good reviews in the door. This negative review won't be the end of you. So that's no. how the best way to address these things. And I also think as a final tip, if you are somewhat a little hot headed and you have other people in your team is set a rule in your business that you are not allowed to respond to a comment unless somebody else has read your comments, your response first. That was a rule that was brought up in my clinic. That, that's a really good rule. And actually I, I respond to all of the, the reviews, positive or negative yeah. for the clients I work with. And usually I'll get notified. So I have a, some software that sends me a message saying there's been a one star. So usually I contact the clinic and they, I'm the bearer of bad news, but then I also usually <laughs> am the one that's composing or writing up. They can, yeah. you know, give me, I think that's a good point, Tyson. You really need to make sure that, <laughs> that, that kind of stop gap or that safety net is a, is a huge help to make sure that you don't fight fire with fire. Especially if you're a business owner who is, is emotional and loves your business and you care about it. Yeah. And, and I've mentioned this, you know, where your, your business is like you, your child. And if somebody said something negative towards your child or slapped your child, you would be on them so fast. And sometimes that's our initial reaction. So I think it's good to just pause, write what you want, not online, on in a Word document. Get somebody else in your team to read it and go, is that a suitable response? If they say, yes, it is then post it, but just make that a rule in your clinic that if, if you do the wrong thing, and this is what we said, that if I do the wrong thing, I have to give a thousand dollars to a podiatrist in town I don't like. That was the rule. So I always made sure I ran everything past other people in the clinic first. Sounds like a solid plan there. Okay, Jim, that was a good topic. I enjoyed that one. Are we done? Yeah, we're all good. Okay. I will talk to you next week from sunny North Queensland. All right, Tyson. I'll talk to you. Okay, bye.